Hello friends, I was hesitating between two famous titles uh, for this talk on the current state of automation. It's a perennial topic of mine, a favorite topic, uh, and I, you know, uh, but I think it's an important topic and we need to talk about it on a regular basis. So the titles were Tales of Two Cities from Charles Dickens and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, The Western from Sergio Leone. So I decided on the latter because there's really a trifecta effect going on here. So Good, Bad, and Ugly is very fitting. And this is something we all need to be prepared for. Uh, you know, automation is here, it's coming, and it's just gonna get worse, so we need to be prepared. So uh, there's an interesting article in uh, Entrepreneur. It's uh, from a uh, guest writer, Mark Fisher. And I had a, uh, it came out a few weeks ago, but I had to let it percolate a little bit. Uh, it's entitled, AI isn't replacing workers. It's picking up the slack. Here's how. The university pipeline is not graduating nearly enough uh, knowledge workers to fill even the present demand. Maybe all those robots could help. Uh, so uh, I have, uh, I, I, I believe this is true, but uh, I have a better story, a more realistic one, because Mark here is referring uh, to uh, automating college students. And we're definitely not quite there. Welcome to the Valamel Show. My name is Manuel Amunategui. Please sign up for my newsletter. It's right here in the middle of the site. And, uh, you know, uh, subscribe to the channel. Give it some big fat thumbs up. It's always appreciated. And the story will be uh, classified under channels, uh, state of the industry. So you click here and you'll see all my videos, you know, talking about, you know, the current state of things. Um, so, uh, uh, an acquaintance of mine uh, in the Midwest, so we're not talking about New York City or California here, we're talking about, you know, the Midwest is actually a suburb of Minneapolis uh, who works in machinery. It's the real deal. They take these huge blocks of aluminum and they cut them, they drill them, they make custom valves for customers, and the demand is huge and they just can't hire machinists. Uh, I mean, I guess it's expected. We know we're at 3.6% unemployment. So they had to revert to robots, what was initially kind of like a, a, a a toy project playing around with one robot turned out to be a race to, to, to kind of, you know, fulfill the demand out of necessity, really. So these are, you know, your typical, uh, you know, orange or yellow articulated arm and that can cut, that can drill. It's driven by a camera and they're very simple to program. They definitely, they, they work really well 24-7. They don't, they don't require bathroom breaks or lighting. They basically set them up at night, you know, come back in the morning and the work is finished and they just kind of buff the stuff and, you know, it's ready to go. Uh, these arms usually cost around $200,000. So, uh, you know, they're planning on purchasing even more. They're fairly simple to program and it's an investment that really pays for itself. And the end product is even better than what, what a human could do. So uh, uh, here, let's read a quote from, from Mark's article here. Um, research firm Corn Ferry predicted that companies in technology, media, and telecom will face a talent shortage of 1.1 million by 2020. By 2030, the numbers, the number will grow to 4.3 million, the report said, and the result will be an intense competition for dwindling, dwindling, dwindling pool of tech professionals. Uh, that competition, I think, has already started. Uh, there are a lot of tech workers out there ready to tackle new jobs. The part of the problem is that uh, oftentimes these employers are not willing to pay the right salaries, and that's why a lot of people move with, move to San Francisco. Because in San Francisco, a six-figure salary usually means a number that starts with a two or a three, while uh, you know anywhere else in the country, a uh, six-figure salary is something that starts with a one, right? Uh, another quote here, um, the App Association 2018 State of the App Economy report revealed that there is just one computer science graduate from for every eight available computer jobs. So, you know, that's quite, you know, qu quite drastic. And I don't think the robots that we have today are quite ready to, uh, you know, to to write computer code. But they, they can definitely handle uh, simple automation, like, you know, writing manuals, uh, doing advertising, uh, uh, support uh, support operators, like through chatbots. That's already here. Uh, so, you you know, we are going to see that more and more. And I think that's a good thing, right? Because, you know, like uh, like my acquaintance, they just can't hire. That. The only way they can, you know, fulfill demand and keep the business afloat is through robots. So I think that's a good thing. Let's move on to the bad. Uh, uh, this is uh, an article in The Verge. U.S. Postal Services will use autonomous big rigs to ship mail in a new test. I think this is still very, very symbolic, uh, but it's definitely a, a signs of time. We're definitely progressing in this um, in this direction, let me read a quote from the article. The United States uh, the United States Postal Services USPS has chosen self driving trucking company Too Simple to haul mail as part of a two week test uh, of the startup's autonomous technology. Too Simple will carry the mail on five round trips between the USPS's Phoenix, Arizona, and Dallas, Texas distribution centers, which is a stretch of more than a thousand miles. So. That is very impressive, uh, but what what I, why I call that bad and not good is uh, the USP, USPS workers have had their hours cut, their pensions threatened. Uh, so this 
just does not bode well. It's just one more, you know, nail in the coffin. We know that uh, everybody's experimenting with delivery robots, right? There are drones, there are robots, there are blimps, there are even, you know, catapults. Everybody uh, is uh, trying it out. So I think uh, being a, a U.S. postal worker right now is probably, you know, it's just not a safe job. I mean, this is something that's going to be automated. It's already being automated. Uh, you know, I, re- I feel sorry for those that are in that, that profession. Let's move on to the ugly. Um, there is an article here, Amazon rolls out machines that pack orders and replace jobs. So this is nothing against Amazon because everybody's doing it, right? That would amount to uh, to more than uh, 1,300 cuts uh, across 55 U.S. fulfillment centers for standard size inventory. Amazon would expect to recover the cost in under two years at $1 million per machine uh, plus operation expenses, uh, they said. And it's, the changes are not there, right? They're still, they're still you know, thinking about it. So these are basically uh, these machines that can, that can really replace very menial uh, labor, but that was hard to do before, basically making, you know, f- uh, folding boxes. And I know some people feel that there are some jobs that are just, you know, that are just beneath us and they should, it's a good thing that we're removing them. Uh, like, you know, jobs that are uh, just either demeaning, uh, grinding, jobs that will kill us over the long run, etc. But I think the right to work supersedes any of these ideals, especially when we're living in a money-based uh, society. And survival here means, you know, making, you know, making money, it means working. And I think that's, that's, Part of the, the the ugly because um, uh, once we start experimenting with these things, like so, let's let's take the example of um, uh, you know of my my acquaintance in, in in Minneapolis. Once there's an economic downturn and all these people that had these fancy jobs now suddenly want to become you know uh, machinists or suddenly want to start folding boxes, do you think these companies are going to turn uh, these the robots off? to let the humans start doing that work again? Of course not. If you had that machine, you wouldn't. If I had a machine, I wouldn't, right? So this is basically, uh, it's a one-way street. Uh, and it's just it signs of time. There's nothing we can do about it. You know, there's no matter, say, oh, you know, you got to turn the, the machine off that makes boxes just because it's immoral. Uh, you know, no, right? That's it. So I mentioned that you have to be prepare yourself. And I think that's, that's important. And I have a very simple application, but it's a fun one uh, about a serious topic. Go to viralml.com, go to tools, and it's here. It's it's called Will Your Job Be a Victim of Automation? And hit the Try Me button. And it's a very simple tool. And let's put uh, you know postal worker in the box. Postal worker. And it's going to tell you the probability of a job being automated, right? So um, let's uh, let's hit this. And uh, the higher the number, that means the higher the probability of it being uh, automated. And here, I hope you can see it. Uh, uh, let's see. Postal worker clerks, 95%. So 95 out of 100 chance of it being automated. So this just shows to you that, you know, this is a very high risk job. It's going to be automated. So if you find yourself, if you put your job or you know somebody's job is there in a high, high, high probability, look, you know, keep looking at stuff for lower probabilities, right? So you can look at the bottom of the list, animal, uh, animal control workers, right? That's a lower. So if you want to re- reinvent yourself, you know, become an, uh, you know, work with animals, just, just, just as an example, right? There are, uh, you know, there are thousands of jobs in there, play around with it. I think it's an important tool and we need to think about it. And if, you know, if you, if you know this, this area, uh, make sure you share it with people who don't know this area. People need to be aware of it. So I like also to send out a whisper, a whisper to the tech resistance, to all the programmers out there. Don't be in such a hurry to automate yourself out of work because once it's done once we are can automate programming i mean i think uh the it's a form of singularity the the old way of making a living will be over forever uh to end this video i'm going to talk about uh, a book i wrote so i'm, I'm the author of a few books uh, ironically uh you know entitled uh you know alert uh, monetizing machine learning so i know you know uh i'm saying you know we don't want to <laughs> over automate ourselves but you know uh it's, it's the state of times it's definitely a very good career to be in right now in this book, we take uh, we take you know Python machine learning models and we export them to the web so that the entire world can uh, enjoy and access your models. Uh, it doesn't have to be about replacing work; it also can be good things, right? Statistics to, to to be safe, to be healthy, you know, all sorts of things. So you can find my books. You can put my first and last name uh, on the Amazon search bar, and you'll find all my books here. And this right here, monetizing machine learning, turn Python ML ideas into web applications on the serverless cloud. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to give us some thumbs up. Thank you.